Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today we're continuing our Mount and Blade 2 Bannerlord Beginner's Guide with a conversation about influence. While not important right at the start of the game, it very quickly becomes relevant if and when you sign up as a mercenary with a faction, and even more so when you become a vassal or are otherwise integrated into the feudal society as nobility. So, not only is it relevant, it becomes quite crucial. With no time to waste with a prolonged introduction, let's dive right on in to what should be a pretty short set of pointers. First off, influence is a representation of your sway within the kingdom. As a mercenary, it translates into money made, but as a vassal, it translates into so much more. To become a mercenary for a faction, you need to be clan tier 1, and then you just have to speak to one of their nobles and pledge your sword to them. To become a vassal, you have to be clan tier 2, and then you have to speak to the leader of the faction you want to pledge allegiance to, ask them to take you on, swear your oath, and you're a vassal. Raising your clan tier can be time consuming, but it's a pretty easy process. Go around killing bandits and looters, gain renown, and climb that ladder. Now, influence is a second currency. It represents your political clout. If you take a look at the kingdom screen that unlocks when you are part of a kingdom, one way or another, you'll be able to see just how much influence every clan within that kingdom has. This gives you a good idea about who's the more important clan. Who's worth befriending, who's less valued. When you join, you'll start near or at the very bottom of the pile. You'll want to accumulate influence as quickly as possible, because you'll need to use it for a variety of important things. Anytime a city or castle is taken, for example, there's a vote to decide who gets it. And it costs a minimum of 50 influence to vote. You can vote with more influence to have more sway, but if you don't have that much influence, you abstain from voting. And that typically upsets the parties that were potential winners of the new lands. Anytime a policy goes up for a vote, you need a minimum of 20 influence to vote. And again, sometimes you'll want to spend even more influence so that you can truly sway the result. Some policies may very well not be in your favor, no matter how long you've been with a kingdom. Influence is also used to propose your own policies or disavow those that you don't like, to speak for clans that you're partial to or against those that you dislike, and even to propose a shift in fief ownership if you feel so bold. Truly, influence is the stuff internal politics is made of. And finally, influence is also the key to raising your own banners and having other parties join your army rather than merely being a follower in somebody else's army. So. How does one gain this all-important pseudo-currency? Well, there are a few ways. Fighting battles is the easiest of ways. Regular battles against looters and bandits is the same as gaining renown and morale. The more the odds are stacked against you, the better the reward you receive in the form of influence. When it comes to siege battles and bigger battles as a part of a massive army, it seems as though your direct involvement and the involvement of your troops as part of the whole operation has a very big impact on how much influence you get. So, make sure you're climbing the ladders or busting through the gates or leading the charge on the open field if needed. Performing well in an attacking siege battle is especially good because it seems to give you more of a claim over the fief that's been attacked, so it's an extra reason to get more involved than not. But that's more of a conversation for a different video when we talk about fiefs. Basically, when you're fighting battles, impress the people that are watching you. As the other nobles see you doing bolder things, you'll gain more influence because they realize just how cool the guy or girl you are. Find those walls, attack those defenders, chase after nobles, be aggressive. Donating prisoners is another great easy method. Head to the nearest castle, gain access, head to the dungeon, and donate the prisoners you have. The more you donate, and the higher quality of prisoners you donate, the bigger bump you'll get to your influence. It's very easy to go from battle to battle, pick up prisoners as you chase bandits and looters and whatnot, and then drop them off at a nearby dungeon. Some major settlements have dungeons as well, and you can absolutely donate prisoners to their dungeons just as well as at any castle. Note that donating prisoners for increased influence only applies when you're a vassal of the nation to which you're donating. So don't go donating prisoners when you're not a vassal, you're just wasting potential income. 
and apart from prisoners, you can also donate troops for the garrison. Once again, quantity and quality come together to affect how much influence you gain when you donate troops to either a castle or a settlement. Giving the troops is an easy enough action to take. Just head to a castle or a major settlement that has a keep, and you can either request access to a castle and donate troops to the garrison, or at the major settlement, head to its keep and donate troops to the garrison there. There is a touch of nuance worth applying, though. As you near your destination, hover over it to see its current garrison. As per my experiments, a castle or city keep that has a smaller garrison when you get there will be a better source of influence. In other words, donating a garrison to a location that doesn't currently have a big one will net you more influence than donating troops to a place that's already well garrisoned. Think of it as supply and demand. A great way to take advantage of this is to be in the front line of a war, and to donate troops to any newly conquered castle or major settlement right away. Its garrison will be tiny or potentially non-existent when the conquest is just recently completed, and so the influence gain will be great. Note again that donating troops to the garrison only gives you an influence boost when you're a vassal of the kingdom to which you are donating. Simply being in an army is another easy way to trickle a little bit of influence. Just go to an army that's forming, click on the army, and request to join it. Finding an army is just a matter of keeping an eye out for the notifications that pop up on the right and then traveling to where that notification takes you, or you might come across them as you're traveling around, either during war, or even during peace actually, because armies form to perform patrols, etc. Now, after you join, your influence will tick up as time goes on, until the army disbands. Keep in mind that forming and leading your own army doesn't have the same effect, so don't try to farm influence that way. You need to join another army, and only then will you get that slight trickle of influence. Now, if you want to get a little extra from your time spent marching with an army, consider the age-old saying, an army marches on its stomach. If you're the one to keep those stomachs full, you will gain a lot of influence. Before joining an army, go to the nearby towns and buy up all the food that you can. Don't worry about exceeding your limit either, as long as you can catch up to and join the army. Now, eventually, when the individual parties in the army run out of their own food, you'll automatically share yours and gain influence. My understanding is that you gain influence per starving party, and the amount you gain is dependent on how big the starving party is. Keep a close eye on your own food reserves though, you're literally feeding an army, so food will run out faster than if you were just feeding your own party. Every once in a while, when you're near a settlement, I'd suggest leaving the army to grab more food and then rejoining to continue feeding the troops. You can also consider buying mules and sumpter horses so you can carry more without needing to exceed your limit, though again, unless you get too far away from your target army, it doesn't really matter until it disbands and you're on your own and slower than the dangers around you. Joining and feeding armies, especially during wartime, is the easiest way to gain influence, and if you get involved in siege battles and you're rewarded with a fief, you can also build a forum at said fief to gain daily influence. Finally, you can play politics. If you open up the kingdom screen and take a look at the various policies, you'll notice that some are very focused on who they affect. Find the ones that give a clan in your situation influence and consider proposing those. Or on the flip side, find the ones that take influence away from you and if they're active, try disavowing them. It costs influence to do so, so make sure there is support for a policy you want enacted or lack of support for one you want disavowed. Basically, this bar over here needs to be closer to 100% if you're trying to push a policy and should be closer to 0% if you're trying to disavow an active policy. This will ensure that your influence isn't spent in vain. Apart from proposing or disavowing a policy, you'll have to pay influence to actually cast your vote as well. So yes, this is very expensive, but some policies are worth it. You might want to take a look at some policies like military corone, and while I might be butchering the pronunciation, I can certainly assure you that it is worth investing in if you're intending to take part in combat. Just make sure you can afford the increased wages though. Also keep in mind that your reputation with the other clans is at stake when you propose or disavow policies. If people do or do not like what you have to say about the kingdom's policies, your relations with them 
will improve or worsen, and that will affect things in the bigger picture. Now, just as influence can be gained, so too can it be lost. Be wary of the policies that drain your influence, especially the one that simply takes one influence away per day. If that's active, you'll need to keep fighting against the negative flow, and yes, your influence can end up in the negatives. You can also see your influence drop significantly if you step out of line in a major way. For example, assembling an army and marching into friendly lands to declare war will pull your entire nation into war, and you likely won't see any real rewards from it since your influence will be so heavily penalized. With that said, if you've got a lot banked up, this is a good way to bring the might of your liege lord against a target where you might have hopes of settling down. I hope this short video helped explain the concept and mechanics of influence, as well as the best and easiest ways to obtain it. If you want to be a master of more than just your own small band of men and companions, you'll need to obtain influence one way or another, and then of course, you should use that influence to further your own goals or the goals of your friends if you feel so inclined. And on the topic of using your influence, make sure to use your real life influence by leaving a like and a comment down below if you'd like to see more guide videos for Bannerlord. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with all the Bannerlord coverage as well. Make sure as well to let me know if you have any particular topics you'd like to see covered. I always keep my eyes peeled in the comments to see what people might be interested in learning more about. As always, a massive thanks goes out to all of my channel members and patrons for supporting the channel on a monthly basis. You keep us alive and running smoothly. And a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.